game for them back then. Oakland starting lineup coming up being announced right now. To start out Malika Glover, number 10, 5'3 guard sophomore from East Lansing. Malika Glover, no stranger to see in action. She's a very good defensive player, averaging only 2.6 points per game so far this season, but a great defensive player as well. Brittany Carnego, we don't have to go down her stat column and let you know what she's capable of. She's capable of blocking shots and getting rebounds all over the all over the floor. Six foot four center. Victoria Lemscomb, number 30, five foot seven guard. Also a dynamic score on this team. Sharice Calhoun's gonna run the point tonight. 5'5", five, five, senior from Toledo, Ohio. And Bethany Waterward, 5'11", junior from Lake Orion, Michigan, my alma mater. And Brittany Car or excuse me, Bethany Waterward, as we said, almost 19 points per game so far this season. To counter Oakland tonight, Western Illinois gonna send out Valencia Kelly, number four. Five foot six senior from Brunswick, Georgia. A lot of upperclassmen in the starting lineup. Only one underclassman, and that's Rebecca Hendrickson, number 15, a guard from Lendigo, Sweden. So we got some European blood out there on the floor tonight. Jackie Rieger, number 12, forward, six foot tall from Parkwood, Illinois, a junior. Sadie Webb, the leading scorer for the Leathernecks, 5'11, senior from Emporia, Kansas. She's number, wearing number 24. And Michelle Savatori, cap it off tonight, 5'10, junior from Rock Falls, Illinois. She'll be wearing number 25. So it should shape up to be a good game tonight. Both teams pretty equal in the stat column. Both teams equal in the record column tonight. Should be a little bit of a uh, defensive battle, but also both teams able to, uh, as we said, you told me a little stat earlier, Western Illinois gives up the most points in the Summit League defensively, whereas Oakland also scores the fewest uh, amount of points per game offensively in the Summit League. Yeah, absolutely. And watch out for their number four scoring option off the bench, uh, averaging five and a half points per game as well. Sole Contatate, uh, who's coming off the bench for them. Watch for her to have a big impact for Western Illinois, possibly in this game. If one of the big three can't get going, you know, expect her to maybe step up in this game. Their last time out was a 73-54 loss at IPFW. It was Salvatore with 11 and Jackie Rieger with 12 in that game. Valencia Kelly only had five points, though, for the Leathernecks. Meanwhile, for Oakland, it was Bethany Waterworth doing the lion's share of the work. Last time out, she had 27 in the win against IUPUI. So at center floor, Michelle Salvatore jumping it up against Brittany Carnego, and Salvatore is going to win that tip for Western Illinois. Rebecca Hendrickson going to take the point here, drive to her left, kicks it outside for about a 15-foot jumper, and right off the go, Jackie Rieger is able to tickle the twine there. Put Western Illinois, Western Illinois up 2 nothing here early on their first possession. Victoria Lemscum going to work it down low now to Brittany Carnego. Tries to pass it into water with it. Loses a handle on it, poked away and gathered by Salvatore. So oh, Oakland good. needs to limit turnovers here. They went for about 20 turnovers last time out. They need to cut that number down. Rebecca Henry's on the left wing, being guarded by Vicky Lemscum. Check that Malika Glover. Now a deep pass inside, up off the glass. Rebecca Henderson took a nice pass from Valencia Kelly. Western Illinois up 4-0 early. If you want to attack the paint against this Golden Grizzlies team, that's how you do it. You draw Brittany Carnego away from the blocks. Waterworth with a little jump shot, right hook shot in triple coverage, though. Not able to get it to go as it falls and rebounded out by Western Illinois. Leathernecks on top, 4-0 here. Again, last time down, they drew BC away from the basket. That's when they attacked. At the in the lane, watch for them to do it this time down too. Jackie Rieger trying to cross over Brittany Carnego down low, bounce pass right through the defense. Sadie Webb gathered that one up, went off the glass. Western Illinois up six nothing early. Coach Becky Francis is going to call timeout real early in this one to try to stop this this offensive run from the Leathernecks. And both times uh, down the court here just now, we saw them attack the basket. We saw them also try and pull BC away from the ball. That time down, it was Rieger dribbling outside. She had Carnega one-on-one, -on -one, so she's out away from the basket, and then the bounce pass inside. Suddenly, there is no post help inside for the Golden Grizzlies because Carnego's usually the one locking it down. So excellent offensive execution by the Leatherbacks on their first couple of possessions here. They're up 6-0 early. It looked like Oakland was trying to run a little bit of his own defense there, not really playing man-to-man, -man, so. Sort of a man-to-zone combo almost. I think there might have been some confusion. You know, when you've got a couple play, a couple people playing zone and a couple people playing man, what you really have is no defense at all, really. So down 6 nothing early here, Sharice Calhoun. I'll work it over to Vicky Limscombe, who works it down low to Brittany Carnego, tries a little back down. Drop step, gets it up off the glass. No good, rebounded by Sharice Calhoun, who puts it back up for two. Oakland's on the board, 6-2 with 18.30 to go in the first half. 
Now a fake shot, which fools Bethany Waterworth dribbling in and blocked by Brittany Carnego with Sadie Webb. Couldn't get it to go. Beth Waterworth now in transition on the right wing, gets double teamed, kicks it out to Vicky Limpscomb. Limpscomb to Waterworth for three. It's good and down. Oakland right back down, only down by one now. 6-5 with 18-10 to go here. Waterworth, la half. Waterworth last time out was awesome from deep. She connected on five of her six triples. Now a three no good for Michelle Savatori on the opposite end of the court. Cherise Calhoun going to drive in now and rims around and able to go. Oakland just like that down 6 nothing, up by 1-7-6 here. 17-48 to go in the first half. Sadie Webb going to work over to the right wing now, guarded by Carnego. It's Jackie Rieger. Pressure defense by Carnego, able to poke that ball away. And out of bounds as number 24, Sadie Webb, tried to come in and gather it. But couldn't gather it enough because it went out of bounds, so Oakland's going to get the ball. Rieger's six foot, oh, she's the tallest starter out there for Western Illinois. So they put Carnego on her naturally, but a little bit more athletic. She dribbles the ball uh, better than most at her height. She's able to pose an interesting matchup problem for the Golden Grizzlies. Not for them to maybe attack that a couple of times here in this game as Peyton Apsey and Liz Hamlet check into the game. Liz Hamlet with the ball right in front of us here. Going to go to her left on that left wing. Not about that left elbow, going to pass it out to Waterworth. Waterworth going to go to her right, back to Hamlet. At the top of the arc. Calhoun now working on the right wing. Tries to float a pass into Beth Water. Goes up and gets it. It's that pulls back. it down and up off the glass for two. It's that back shoulder fade. You lead the player into the baseline with enough space for them to catch and shoot. Valencia Kelly going to try to back down. Victoria Limpscomb then draws a drop step back up for two. Doesn't able to get it to go. Rebounded by Vicky Limpscomb. Limps come back on the floor to Beth Waterworth for a long three-pointer, and it's down and good. Just like that, 12-6. Oakland on top with a 12-0 run with 16.54 to go here in the first half. And now Western Illinois is choosing to call timeout. How about that? Just like that, the Oakland Golden Grizzlies jump out on top here on this Monday night. And my goodness, a 12-0 run for them in the last minute and a half, two minutes or so. I don't know what Coach Francis said during that timeout, but it uh, definitely brought that them out firing. Well, coming with a different look, too. You put Apsey out there along with Hamlet, so you're going with a little bit of a small ball lineup, plus Waterworth, who's able to play at the post. She's able to play on the wing as well. So now you've got Carnego on the bench, and you've also you're also going with that guard look, you know, maybe going with a little bit more length in, uh, in Liz Hamlet and putting Glover on the bench for the moment, too. 12-6 ball game. Golden Grizzlies on top with 16.47 to go here in the first half. Valencia Kelly going to swing that ball around. Now working back down low. The Salvatore is going to go up, rim out. And no good, but she's going to draw a foul and go to the line. Excuse me, that's Sadie Webb, not Michelle Salvatore. Sadie, Sadie Webb going to go to the line here. Oakland last time out with a 54-50 win over IUPUI in a season-high six triples, and Bethany Waterworth had five of those. Equaled their career high with five threes in the game for team high 27. First free throw is good. 12-7 ball game here. Western Illinois still trailing in this game. Sadie Webb leading scorer for the Leathernecks with 13.6 points per game. She's 46 for 61 on the season in free throws. 75% shooter. Knocks the second one down, so she's perfect tonight. Yule Vestin into the game for the Golden Grizzlies. Watch out for her. She gives them a different look offensively. Able to play very well with her back of the basket. Vicky Limpscomb on the left wing. Swings it around to Sharice Calhoun. Back to Waterworth. Limpscomb had an open shot. Decided not to take it to Waterworth. Limpscomb again with an open shot. Doesn't take it. Waterworth back with the ball. Works it into Vestin. She loses a handle on it. Vicky picks it up. Peyton Absey got it now. Goes left baseline. Up off the glass. She's working in there, there on Sadie Webb. Went right at her and got it easy. And that's what uh, that's what Apsey does for you. She's a spark plug off the bench for Oakland. Now with a jumper guarded by Lipscomb. No good for Valencia Kelly. It's a tough shot. She tried to go up over Lipscomb. Couldn't get it to go. Rebounded out by Oakland. 14-8 ball game here. Waterworth for three on the left wing. And guess what? That baby's good too. Three for three from behind the arc tonight. That puts Oakland on top. 17-8. She's got 11 points. She is perfect from downtown. She's hit all of their triples and taken all of them. 17-8 ball game with 15-40 remaining here in the first half. Down low now off the glass. Nice hook shot by Salui. Kanta tight. You mentioned her earlier in the game. Says she's a spark plug off the bench. And she got that one good. 
Tough and shot. That's, made the, it. And that's the mismatch down there now with Apsi playing down there on the blocks against her. Lips Cup with a catch and release. Can't get it to go off the backboard and off the rim. Rims out and rebounded out by Brittany Demery. Now Valencia Kelly gets it back to Remery. Continuity. Guarded by Peyton Apsi. Now easy give and go, but no good. Rebounded by Lick. All right, just count us down now. Blowing up no good there off the shot for number 24, Sadie Webb. Oakland going to get the ball as that ball was airballed out of bounds. 17-10 Oakland with 15.02 to go here in the first half. So we're back to basketball here from the arena. Therese Calhoun going to work Liz Hamlet fakes a shot there from the three-point line on the left wing. The water went back to Hamlet, had an open shot. Left baseline, didn't take it. Uses pick set up by Brittany Carnego. Off the back side of the iron, no good. Rebounded out by Emery, or is it? Oh. Emery and uh, Liz Hamlet there fighting over that rebound. They give a jump ball, they're gonna give it to Oakland. It's a nice fight there by Liz Hamlet, showing some feistiness. Yeah, after the mess, she got a good look. Used the screen from Carnego to free up for a mid-range jump shot. Lipscomb, wide open shot for three. Pulls it down, doesn't decide to shoot it. Brittany Carnego gonna roll right now. Out to Calhoun, back into Carnego. Hamlet, open three, right wing, off the front of the rim, rebounded out by Rebecca Henriksen. Henriksen throws it ahead now, guarded by Calhoun, and up for good. Michelle Salvatore, a little five foot jump shot from the right baseline. Salvatore on the season, shooting 38.5% from the floor. We got a kick ball here. Liz Hamlet tried to bounce pass it over to Beth Waterworth, kicked out of bounds. And down here for Salvatore as well, only shooting. 28.6% from the floor, or excuse me, from three on this season. You'd expect a, a little bit more in terms of volume shooting from her, but. Malika Glover gonna check back into the game here. Beth Water with 11 points tonight. Just under six minutes into this game, and she's got 11 already, perfect from the field. Knocked it down three three-pointers, and she's got the ball on the left wing. Bounce passes it to Vicky Limpscomb. Lipscomb looking for an outlet. Back to Waterworth, sings it, swings it over to Malika Glover. Who gets double teamed, bounce pass. Back to Waterworth, five on the shot clock. In and out. Bounced off the side of the rim and out of bounds. As Western Illinois tried to gather it, but they poked it out of bounds. So Oakland's going to maintain possession here. Yeah, and that's that's the poor play there from Brittany Demery. You know, you've got the rebound. It falls right into your hands, and then it just goes off your hand. You're all alone by yourself, and it hits your paw and goes out of bounds. Vicky Limps come to Sharice Calhoun. Tries to work it in low to Carnego, who gets double teamed. Shoves it back out to Calhoun. Vicky Limps come now, top of the arc. Aggressive defense, excellent defense up top. Floated pass into Beth Waterworth. He's at about that right elbow. Loses the handle on it. Carnego gets it back. Malika Glover now tries to drive in. A little scoop up off the high glass, no good. It was a compressed zone look there, a 1 2 2 by Western Illinois. And a wide open three for Salu Conatante. Knocks it down from that right wing, makes it 17-15. 13-19 to go here in the first half. Vicky Limps going on the left wing. Nice easy pass into Beth Waterworth. Nobody guarding her. See, that's the problem. When you shift over to the strong side, you need that weak side help in that 1-2-2. Two, two. Otherwise, an offensive player can sit in the middle of that zone and get the ball. Driving to the left now, working on Waterworth. Ball poked away. Up off the glass, rims around and out. No good for Jackie Rieger. And Carnego with a good defense there, getting a hand in the face. Cerise Calhoun looking for an outlet pass. She finds Bethany Waterworth, double team comes. She swings it around to Calhoun and gets it back. The lips go for a long two, or is it a three-pointer? I think it's a three-pointer. She knocks it down from the right wing. Makes it 22-15 with 12 and a half to go here in the first. Good ball movement by the Golden Grizzlies here in this game. That's the key to them putting up points. And to answer that three-pointer, Jackie Rieger right in the face of the Oakland defender. I think it was Beth Waterworth over there on the defense. Now this motion offense that Becky Francis runs, you know, sometimes there's a lot of motion, you know, where, where it's not really getting into an attacking area, but here tonight there's been a lot of uh, movement going in towards the bucket. And that's when this offense is at its best because then the defense is forced to collapse. We're seeing this zone by Western Illinois, this 1-2-2. Two, two. They're compressing. But when this offense runs right, it makes that defense compress, and then you expand the offense, and then you get shots inside and out. 
Ball slipped out of bounds after a Western Illinois defender there, so Oakland's going to inbound it, maintain possession as Malika Glover is going to take the ball at the top of the arc. They've changed to a man-to-man -man defense now. Yulia Vest into Liz Hamilton's going to drive in. Nice little no-look pass to Sharice Calhoun, a little eight-foot jumper from the right baseline. It's good. It makes Oakland on top 24-18 with 11.50 to go here in the first half. Driving in now, no good for Jackie Rieger. Had nowhere to go in the land of Giants down there. Lost a handle on the ball, and Oakland gathered it. So they forced the triple team, but now, even then, 15 seconds on the shot clock, and Oakland gets the ball back. They have lots of time to come back and in the same possession bust this zone. Liz Hamlin inbounds at the Waterworth. Swings it around to Calhoun now. Back to Waterworth on the left wing. Bounce passes it over to Mickey Lipscomb. Sharice Calhoun now. Head fake, drives to her left. Liz Hamlet now, open three. Vicky Lips come off the front of the rim and out. Rebounded by Valencia Kelly. 24-20 Oakland with 10.30 to go here in the first half. Left baseline now, Jackie Rieger. She's going to dribble to her left, got nowhere to go. I think they're going to call a off-the-ball foul. So, something to note here, too, an interesting little fact about these two teams is 24-20 now. Western Illinois gives up 76 points per game. That's the lowest scoring defense in the Summit League. And Oakland at 57 points per game. They're two and a half points behind IUPUI. They're sitting in last place as well in scoring offense. 10-10 to go here in the first half. Liz Hamlet on the right wing, guarded by Valencia Kelly. Vicky Lim's going back to Calhoun on the right baseline. Seven on the shot clock, front of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Michelle Savatori. Savatori wants to push it up the floor now. Works in on Calhoun, decides to pull up. Kicks it over to Sadie Webb. Sadie Webb going to drive in and pull up from the free throw line. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by Calhoun. 24-20 with 9.45 to go in the first half. Waterworth. Back to Vicky Lips. Going back to Waterworth. Ball finds its way in the hands of Malika Glover now. Ball tipped away. As it tried to get into Waterworth. Stolen away by Valencia Kelly. Coming down the other way now. Kelly floats a pass out. Cycles around to Jackie Rieger. We're going to have an offensive foul against Western Illinois. So Oakland's going to take that ball back over. Give that another turnover for Western Illinois. And the foul against Valencia Kelly as she keeps barreling in with a full head of steam. By the way, you know, with Western Illinois, you know, talking about that, that, uh, that defense, you know, they only shoot 34% as a team. That's the lowest percentage in the Summit League as well. You know, Oakland actually shoots 39%, 39.8. That's good for fourth in the conference. But Western Illinois giving up 45% the shots that go up, and Oakland exposing that here tonight. Carnago under the basket, up off the glass and good. Double team down low. Somehow, Car somehow Waterworth found her down low. Carnago went up and got it. Off the back of the air, now in a three-point attempt for Salvatore. You know, on that last trip down the floor, Cam, you know, Western Illinois, they even got a piece of the basketball and still couldn't uh, get the stop. Shelby Harrington rims one out. Calhoun tries to get the rebound. Ball poked out of bounds, though. So Oakland's going to maintain possession as the Leathernecks were the last ones to touch it. 8.54 to go here in the first half. Oakland's on top by six. It's 26-20. Vicky Lemscombe gets the inbound pass. Looking for an outlet now. Thought about driving it in. Got it out to Waterworth. Ball cycles around to Carnago now. Back to Waterworth. Give and go pass to Waterworth. Back down low. Goes up. No foul. Almost out of bounds. Sharice Calhoun saves it. But Western Illinois comes up with it as Valencia Kelly brings it up the floor. Now a spot-up shot off the front of the rim. No good for Michelle Savatori. Rebounded by Beth Waterworth. Oakland on top, 26-20. 8.26 to go here in the first half. Waterworth to Lipscomb. Back to Waterworth. Good ball movement. Back to Lipscomb. Down to Carnego. Now back out to Waterworth. Double team comes for Calhoun. Floats a pass into Carnego. Goes up for a shot. Gets fouled in the act. She'll be going to the line for her first time tonight. Brittany Demery, senior from Oklahoma City, guilty of the foul. The third team foul against Western Illinois here. But again, we're seeing Western Illinois, you know, even when an Oakland shot goes up and they get the miss, the ball just finds a way to go out of bounds in favor of the Golden Grizzlies. You know, they're, they're just not able to get stops here against this Oakland offense. It's not a good sign for Western Illinois going forward, even though you know, they have not played a poor game defensively. They played very well defensively. They're contesting everything, just not able to get stops and go down the other end of the floor. Extended defensive possessions, and that's what hurts a team late in the second half. Carnego knocks down both free throws. 28-20, Oakland on top. Carnego only a 52% free throw shooter, able to get both, though. Now the ball errantly thrown out of bounds, so it'll be a turnover. 
as Rebecca Hendrickson tried to throw that ball across the floor, but they're saying Oakland tipped that ball last. Referee's going to confer here. Two officials, the ones that were right up here about half court, they both said that it was going to be Western Illinois ball. Instead, they get together and they say it is Oakland basketball. No tip indeed. Rebecca Hendrickson threw that ball across the floor and missed everybody. So Oakland's going to get possession here. Vicky Lim's coming at the top of the arc. Brittany Carnego now. Jenna Boschrush in the game for her first time tonight. Waterworth getting pressure defense there from Rebecca Hendrickson. Ball finds its way to Calhoun, drives it high off the glass. No good, rebounded out by Boschrush. They're going to call a foul. FM, the Grizz, Cam Smith alongside Matt Pocket inside the Athletic Center Arena. Brittany Carnegie now on the left wing, going to work it over to Bethany Waterworth. Oakland on top, 28-20. 7.37 to go here in the first half. Bethany Waterworth going to work with the limbs come. Head fake, back to Waterworth. Waterworth looking for Brittany Carnego down low, can't find her. Instead finds Jenna Boschrush. Boschrush kicks it out to Lipscomb. Fires a pass in, double team, and losing a handle on Brittany Carnego. Ball stolen away by Rebecca Hendrickson. Hendrickson. Now a long three-pointer for Sayu Konatante. That's going to air ball out of bounds. Not touch anything, not even the net. Is Oakland going to get the ball here? Back in possession, 28-20, 7.15 to go in the first half. Another game's going on today in the Summit Leagues. Cornell travels to South Dakota. Take on the Coyotes in Vermillion more on a second. Carnego kicks it out to Vicky Lipscomb. Bashrush now back to Carnego. Lipscomb had fake, drives to her right, kicks it out to Brittany Carnego again. Bashrush looks for Calhoun down baseline. Baseline and loses a handle on it. The ball poked away by the Leathernecks, so Oakland will maintain possession. IUPUI, who Oakland played last, they travel to IPFW for a game today. North Dakota State takes on Oral Roberts at 8 o'clock, and South Dakota State travels to Cedar City, Utah, to take on the Thunderbirds of Southern Utah. Calhoun for three in the corner, and it's good. 31-20 now with 6.45 to go in the first half. Oakland makes a league lowest 3.3 three-pointers per game, but lighten it up the last two games. Three-pointer on the other side of the floor, no good for Sadie Webb. And the rebound goes out of bounds as the Leathernecks last one to touch it, so Oakland's going to maintain possession again. And part of that, again, is just that motion offense. You know, it frees up looks. You know, when you when you do the motion offense right, you get looks inside, you get looks outside, you get them with everybody from all over the place. Carnego down low looking for an outlet. Bashrush left baseline, overshoots the hoop. That's going to be rebounded by Conatante. going to pull up at the top of the arc, kick it over to Sadie Webb. Let's check that Rebecca Hendrickson. Hendrickson to Valencia, who's going to drive in. And she floats it around the rim and good. Valencia Kelly for two. When you're going at a good defense that can influence shots, the best way to go about it is to pull up over them and make them step in towards you. 31-22. Open on top with 5.55 to go here in the first half. Jenna Boschrus to Calhoun. going to drive right baseline off the rim. Rims around and drops. This has been a little stingy here as Calhoun had big contact under the rim. No call either way. Contante going to float around. It's going to cycle around. Now to Hendrickson, who's going to drive in and kick it out to Kelly. Kelly's going to drive in on Boschrus. She kicks it out to Hendrickson. Swings it around for a wide open three. Sadie Webb on the right wing. That is great ball movement there. The drive inside the lane, the kick out to the right wing from Kelly, and then suddenly it's just an open three for Sadie Webb. And a traveling call against Oakland. But I'll tell you what, you know, that extra pass there, you know, I thought that, that Valencia Kelly was sitting there on the wing when she got the ball back, and she was going to take that shot instead. Boom, got rid of it right away, and it opened up an easy tray for Sadie Webb, who's sitting at the elbow, and that's what good ball movement does. That's what a good dribble drive does. It makes the defense collapse, and then they can't expand fast enough to cover the wings. 33-25, Oakland on top with 5-10 to go in the first half. Valencia Kelly, that ball at the top. Conatante guarded by Liz Hamlet. Thinks about driving right. Ball poked away by Hamlet, though. Gathered in. Going up for a shot. Blocked by Bethany Waterworth. As Sadie Webb tried to go up over top of her. Waterworth swats it away and out of bounds. Webb at 5'11", as well as Bethany Waterworth. And Beth not known as a big shot blocker, but coming up with one there. Valencia, Valencia Kelly off the give and go. Going to drive to her right off the glass. Nuka gets her own rebound. Goes up and gets it. She grabbed that rebound and pulled it down over Malika Glover. That's what an aggressive offensive rebounder should do 
you go up for it, and as soon as you get your mitts on the ball, you start ripping and tearing it to try and pull it away. Mika Glover gonna drive left now. Kicks it out to Liz Hamlet. Sharice Calhoun now. Back to Hamlet, works it in low to Waterworth. Bounce pass to Calhoun to take cash money from the left baseline. Knocks it in for a long two-pointer. Sharice with 13 here on six of eight shooting. She's been excellent here today for the Golden Grizzlies. Now down low, looking for an outlet, kicks it out to the top of the arc. Hitting nothing but the side of the board is Sadie Webb. Rebounded out by Emery, though. And now losing a handle on it, Malika Gover comes up with a steal. Bounce pass to Sharice Calhoun. Pulls up, goes with a shot, no good. Wait for the defense to go over top of her. Couldn't get the easy layup. Now rebounded by Western Illinois. Sadie Webb now. Bounce pass to Konatante off the glass and good with a foul from Bethany Waterworth. On a cold but clear night. Rochester Hills, Michigan on the campus of Oakland University. 35-29, Oakland on top. With 3.52 to go here in the first half. As Conatante going to go to the line for her first three throw attempt tonight. Trying to complete the three-point play. Can't get it to go. Rebounded out by Oakland. Pink Nassi going to get a handle on the ball. Now Vicky Limps come on the right wing looking for a pass. It's good defense by Conatante. Brittany Carnego at the top of the arc. Fires it into Lipscomb. Kicks it out to Apsey for three off the front of the rim. Loose ball rebounded by Carnego, but poked away in a foul on Carnego. And she came in there trying to slap at the basketball and keep the play alive, but instead only got a piece of arm. Valencia Kelly, it's her first foul. Valencia Kelly going to be guarded by Malika Glover here. Pick coming. Kelly tries to use it, drives to her right, guarded by Glover, though. Goes up with a shot, can't get it to go. Great defense by Malika Glover right there, forcing that ball to go nowhere. Out of bounds, but Western Illinois will, Western Illinois will maintain possession. And Oakland getting up 44% from the floor here in this game, but doing a good job contesting everything. And a traveling call for Western Illinois as Emery tried to take a little step there with the ball. So as soon as they get the ball back, they're going to turn it over. 35-29, Oakland with 3.15 to go. In the first half, Malika Lumber bounced pass to Peyton Apps. He works it down low to Liz Hamlet with a little give and go pass to Carnego off the high glass. 37-29, Oakland now. When you get BC going, things are good for the Golden Grizzlies. She can be a huge presence down low for the Grizz. Emery now on the right wing. Now for a long three-pointer, no good. Rebounded out by Vicky Limpscomb. 2.50 to go here in the first half. 37-29, Oakland on top. Vicky Lipscomb to Peyton Apsey, back to Lipscomb. Cycles it over, back to Apsey. Apsey now, right wing, long two-pointer just inside the arc. Rims out, rebounded by Remery. Now Valencia Kelly. It's it back to Demery. Demery works it over to Michelle Salvatore. Salvatore tries to get it down low to Sadie Webb, who's got nowhere to go. Ball out of bounds now. I believe it might have been a foul, too. So. Webb going to go to the line here. Foul on Liz Hamlet. That is her second fourth team foul. This is coming a little bit quicker here for the Golden Grizzlies. By the way, a new season high. 13 points for Sharice Calhoun. She had 10 in her second start of the season against South Dakota. Been an up and down year for Sharice. She's on the bench right now, but shooting a career low 28.6%. After missing the first couple of games this season due to injury. Only two of 15 from three coming in, but she's hit her only three-point chance of the game here today. Saudi Webb coming into this game with 75% free throw shooting. She's perfect tonight. Both trips to the line, four for four. This opens on top by six. It's 37-21. Two and a quarter left to go here in the first half. Sharice Calhoun tries to save a loose ball from going out of bounds. Can't quite get there. Leatherneck's so going to get possession back here. Only trailing by six. Uh, Oakland up by six here. And they've done a good job hanging on to this lead here. Not even really hanging on, but, but making sure that this lead is theirs and there is no question about it. They've played well here tonight. Valencia Kelly over to Saudi Webb. Tries to work it down low to Salvatore. Salvatore with an awkward little jump shot. Off the side of the rim, rebounded by Lipscomb. Aggressive pivot move there, trying to use the up and under to free up some space. Glover there on that left wing. Now to Waterworth, who loses the ball. Gets it back, though. Now ball poked away. Ball poked away by Valencia Kelly in transition. Nice fast break there. Vicky Lemscombe thought about giving the foul, didn't do it. Gave the ball, gave the uh, free basket to Kelly, though. So 37-33, Oakland on top by four here with a minute 30 to go in this first half. Now Carnegie with a little turn and jump. 
from the free throw line off the front of the rim. That's rebounded by Rachel Evans. She can hit that shot sometimes, you know, enough times to make it worth uh, having her step up and get that look sometimes just to keep the defense on their toes. Lindsay Kelly looking for a pick, decides to use it. Off the back of the iron, rebounded by Brittany, er, by Brittany Carnego. It's an awkward looking jump shot there from three. Looks like she released the ball too uh, high over her head. Coast to coast, Therese Calhoun gets that ball, drives through the entire defense. Off the glass and in, 39-33, open with 55 seconds remaining. Here in the first half, Valencia Kelly now. Salvatore, tries to cross over Carnego, can't do it. Kicks it back out to Kelly. Now Kelly's gonna work it over to Contuante. Working down low to Salvatore, who loses it in your feet. Picked up by Beth Waterer. Beth's got numbers if she decides to use it. Passes it over to Calhoun down on the right baseline. Gets stuffed, though. Gets stuffed by Rachel Evans right in front of the basket. Kelly now going to take it coast to coast. Her stuff, and she's stuffed. Oh, baby, what a block by Brittany Carnego. I don't, I'm not entirely sure if Carnego got a piece of that, but the hand was in the way, and she definitely impacted the course of that basketball, so that even if she didn't block it, there was no way that was going in. It just changed the whole angle of the shot. And then back on the other end, a great block from Rachel Evans to start the break, staying with it. Even though the, the fast break started to break down, that's when you typically see some defenders run past. She stayed with it and got the shot blocked for Western Illinois, but now Oakland has it with 15 seconds left and they'll kill some clock. Amy Carlton also into the game here with these last 15 seconds. Liz Hamlet now gonna throw a pass deep inside to Brittany Carnegie. She's blocked from behind by Rachel Evans, but a foul on Rachel Evans. So Carnegie will go to the line here with eight seconds left. In the first half, it's 39-33 Oakland. Brittany Carnegie, a 52% free throw shooter on the season. I don't know what, Matt, why is that? It's so cliche that the big people on the teams, and even in men's and women's basketball, it's like the bigs always have the lowest free throw percentage on a team. Well, and a lot of that, too, is just the trajectory of the basketball is different. You know, you typically want to have an arc on it. Somebody uh, who's a little bit taller, you know, it changes that whole angle. You can't put as much arc on it because then the ball just naturally goes farther. So you see her right there splitting the pair. Splits the pair, puts open on top by seven. It's 40 to 33. Now Conatante going to try to drive in with just a few seconds left. Loses a handle on the ball, though. She just, dribbled, out of bounds. She just dribbled it right off her foot. Uh, they're going to say it's with though. Western Illinois. I don't know about that one. It just hit her foot and skittered away. So Western Illinois going to look for a quick catch and release here. Inbounded to Salvatore at the buzzer almost and off the side of the backboard. Half here, Matt down. By the way, 651 to go in the first half. IPFW at home leading 14 to 10 over IUPUI. That game underway. The down low, no Saudi Webb. First to touch the ball here. Try to work down low in the second half. Nowhere to go though now. Rebecca Hendricks is going to drive in. Kicks it out to Michelle Savatori. And I was just going to say right on cue there, only two points in the first half, knocking down a three pointer. They need her to get going. Beth Waterworth on the other side, off the front of the rim and out, rebounded by Salvatore. Well, Oakland needs her to stay going, too. She's been scorching the ground that she walks on over the last few games. For a three-pointer off the front of the rim, no good for Saudi Webb. Looks like Western Illinois with a little bit of speed. It's a sense of urgency here to start the second half. Run on the floor very quickly. Malika Glover gets the ball poked away now out of bounds. So Oakland will maintain possession with 19-22 left in the first, or in the second. And Cam. You know, right away, bang, bang, couple of quick possessions for Western Illinois. Now, if I'm, you know, if I'm head coach, J.D. Gravina, slow the tempo down a little bit and start working for some shots again. Keep the tempo in flocks. Carnego on the left wing. Good ball movement there. It's Malika Glover and Carnego cycle it back and forth to each other. Carnego with a little scoop and go there off the glass. No good. Gets her own rebound, though, because Hendrickson couldn't pull it down. Now Carnego up again. No foul. Hits the ground. Gets up looking for one. Rebounded now by Valencia Kelly, who's going to drive right in. And Vicky Linscombe loses the ball, though. And Cherise Calhoun picks it up. In transition, Malika Glover fakes the pass. Goes up. Off the glass. Ribs it around and through the twine. 42-36 open on top now. 18-45 in the second. What a weird angle. Parallel to the basket as we have a foul call to Malika. Coming the other way in a hurry. But parallel to the basket and wide of the backboard. Off to that right side, and she still found a way to bank it in for two points. A nice looking shot from Malika Glover as Carnego will go to the bench in favor of Shelby Harrington. You know, again, for Western Illinois, now might be the time that you want to pull it back into the half court. You tried to push the tempo, 
Now you might want to slow it down. Salvatore going to drive right in, and boy, that ball was as about as high as it could go off the backboard before it trickled in through the net. So give Salvatore a quick five points this half. Now Beth Waterworth goes off the glass, can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Sharice Calhoun. They're contesting inside right now, but they're giving up a lot of rebounds. Waterworth again, no good. Rebounded by Salvatore. Sal Salvatore all over the floor so far this second half. She really picked up her game. Now slowing it down, Hendrickson. Over to the right wing there. To Jackie Rieger, Jackie Rieger back to Saudi Webb. Now Valencia Kelly going to try to cross over Limsco. Fires a pass over to Hendrickson. Now pass down low to Saudi Webb. Poked away by Oakland. Now Vicky Limsco down the other floor. Beth Waterworth on that right baseline, guarded by Hendrickson. Works it down low to Shelby Harrington. A little dribble with a right hook there. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar like off the rim and out. Let's see Kelly with the rebound. Floats a pass over to Hendrickson. Give and go back to Hendrickson. He's going to drive on Lipscomb. Bounce pass out to Kelly. Foot on the line. Back of the iron. No good. Rebounded by Lipscomb. Open with a four-point lead here with 17 and a half to go in the second. Lipscomb to Calhoun. Almost runs into her own girl, Malika Glover. Drives in, pulls up, kicks it back out to Beth Waterworth. She's going to drive left baseline. Nowhere to go. Spin move. Right hook. Takes the foul. I believe that's going to be on Sadie Webb. Glover looked a little lost on that possession. She ran into Harrington coming across on the weak side. She almost ran into uh, Lipscomb, as you mentioned just a moment ago. You know, looked, uh, looked a little bit lost out there at times on that possession. Glover, uh, you know, an excellent player in the transition game. Very good defensively as well. As Waterworth hits the free throw. Waterworth good. It's her first trip to the line tonight. On the season, she's shooting. 77.4% coming into today. She might be the, uh, as earlier as we said, that the bigs on most basketball teams are the lowest free throw uh, percentage shooters. And Beth Waterworth, 5'11", she ain't no short round. And she's knocking down a pretty good percentage from the free throw line. 43-38. You know, and part of it, too, is just that form. You know, she gets the elevation on the ball. Second one rims around off the backboard and it's finds its way down. It's about the spin on the basketball and the angle that she brings it up at. Allows for an excellent free throw shooting stroke. By the way, you know, something to watch out for for Western Illinois on this possession cam. A lot of standing around last time for the Leathernecks. A lot of players just waiting for the ball to come to them without really moving away from the defender. Saudi Webb with a head fake on Brittany Carnegie who fell for it. Decides to drive right, now kicks it back out to Remry. Now Saudi Webb going to drive left off the high glass. Brittany Cardago got a hand in there, forced an Eric shot. Rebounded out by Oakland. Sharice Calhoun in transition. Works in on Conate and it gets it in off the high glass. Went, know, she went right at Contuetti and got it all. And again, right there we saw in that possession that a, a lot of initial movement, a lot of ball screens early by Western Illinois, and then late in the possession, a lot of standing around, and players getting locked in on either shot or bust. Oakland with an eight point lead here with 16 and a half to go in the second half. Liz Hamlet gets screened as Conteti tries to work it down low to Saudi Webb. Ball poked out of bounds. And there's going to be a foul against uh, Brittany Carnego, I believe. You know, again, early in the possession, a lot of ball screens being set. And then after about 10, 15 seconds, the play just starts to break down for Western Illinois. There's no more screens, there's no more movement. Just a lot of fronting in the post, and that's about it. Conte to me, going to try to pull up a three, blocked by Carnego out on that left wing. Now forcing it ahead to Shelby Harrington. Goes up with a shot with the right hand, can't get it to go. Ball poked out of bounds, though, by Western Illinois. Last touch, I believe, by Saudi Webb. Again, you know, not to harp on it too much, but the importance of having all that movement is that when you want to use a full 30 on the shot clock, it's not because you have to and because you can't get anything open, it's because you want to and you want to work that for that ideal shot rather than have to force stuff at the last minute. Liz Hamlet had a nice look to the basket there, drove to her right and had a good look real quick, but a hand came in, grabbed her on that foul, so she's going to the line for her first time tonight. Liz Hamlet, a 60% free throw shooter on the season. Knocks down the first one. Only attempted 10 free throws so far this season. Knock down six of them, make it, a, make it seven for 11 now. You know, and you mentioned Liz Hamlet going into the half. You know, she does a lot of things out there for the Golden Grizzlies. You know, she gets on the board here with her first point. Now with her second as well. But she does a lot of things for Oakland. 
It's not just scoring from her. She rebounds. She gets the. Uh, she moves the basketball around well. She's a very good conduit for the offense. Tight defense by Cerise Calhoun over there on that right wing on Valencia Kelly. Now Contatuine gonna fight with it with Liz Hamlet. A jump ball. They're gonna give it to Hamlet. That's twice she's taken the ball away now and taken two jump balls for. In the second half with 15 51 to go, 48 38. We got 15 points from Beth Waterworth, who's normally the highest scorer for the Grizzlies on any given night, but she's eclipsed by Sharice Calhoun, who's got 17 of her own. Season high for her. Kate Napsey on the right wing, checking into the game. Shelby Harrington now cycles it around to Beth Waterworth. Liz Hamlet got a nice look under the basket. Double team down there, but still able to get it to go. See, if you're not going to move, uh, do, use a lot of off-ball movement, then that's what you got to do. Quick passes to free up the shot. Wide open three. Rims out and ends up in the bucket. In, Sadi out, Webb. in, out, in, out. Make up your mind, basketball. It finally did, and it fell down the hole. That was like one of the balls rimming around the uh, game tracker that we have back in the studio when we're looking at it. Just kind of bounces around. Liz Hamlet now on that left baseline. Fires one into Brittany Carnego. She gets a double team, kicks it out to Apsey. Give and go to Shelby Harrington. Just kind of goes up and ball poked away by Brittany Demery. It's a 2-3 tight zone right now by Western Illinois. They're really compressing. And they're playing below the free throw line because Oakland is obliging very happily right now. They want to play in tight. They want to start working the ball down low. But again, not a whole lot of ball movement by Oakland, but these quick passes are really uh, putting that zone under a lot of stress. Inbound pass comes to Liz Hamlet, and she kind of gave it as she got it. Fired it over to Sharice Calhoun, who started to cut to the basket. So ball out of bounds. Western Illinois is going to take over now. Cone to Taite with a spot up shot from the left wing. Can't get that to go. Rebounded by Valencia Kelly. She's going to spot shoot. And that one's going to rim out, rebounded by Bethany Waterworth. Contested shot again by Valencia Kelly. She needs to settle down and, and make things happen. Waterworth's going to go coast to coast all by herself. She's a big girl to be going coast to coast. Goes up with a shot. Gets rejected by Valencia Kelly, though. Ball as it was coming down. Goes off Carnego's knee, or excuse me, Waterworth's knee, though. And out of bounds. So the Leathernecks going to get another possession here. You know, and again, Valencia Kelly, 4 for 12 in this game. She has 8.7 rebounds, 4 assists. She needs to slow things up and stop taking contested jump shots and start working in the flow of the offense here. Jackie Rieger back into the game for the Leathernecks. And pass down low to Cone to Taite off the glass and good. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Kelly waiting, waiting, waiting on the perimeter. Something finally comes open and bam, makes the quick pass for the bucket. Bethany Waterworth, the ball swings around now. Peyton Apsey who bounces it into Carnego, loses a handle. Waterworth ends up with it though on the right wing. Now Liz Hamlet decides to fire it out to Waterworth. Waterworth for a long two off the back of the iron, rebounded by Calhoun. And we're going to have a loose ball foul, I believe, on number 12, Jackie Rieger. Waterworth was 5 for 7 in the first half. She's 0 for 5 here in this half, has not scored uh, yet in the half. Actually, excuse me, she hit two free throws. So we get a visit here from our good buddy Grizz. On WXOU Radio, stuffing his mouth with some good old Oakland popcorn here. Beth Waterworth on that left wing over to Malika Glover. Bounce pass to Peyton Apsey. Fires it over to Waterworth and reaches out and grabs it like Lady Megatron. That's what we call her. Whenever you think a pass is out of her grasp, she's able to pull it down. Now Waterworth and Vicky Limps come. Waterworth's going to drive left. Bounce pass to Carnego. Going to go baseline. Up with a shot. Front of the rim. No good. Rebounded by Rieger. In transition now. Valencia Kelly going to go up. And floats one up off the rim. Good defense there by Vicki Limskin, who got back and forced an Eric shot. Otherwise, good, it would have been easy, too. Good defense, but like the look in transition. You come out, and you want to attack the rack right away as a timeout taken. We'll change the game for you, because those are possessions that are ending without a shot. And if you do get it back, that forces you to change up what you're doing uh, and, and make your team work later in the shot clock. And they certainly fire your team up with a spark, too. Absolutely. Vicky Limps come now on that right wing, fires it across to Peyton Apsey on the opposite side of the floor. Beth Waterworth into Lips come. Nice little six-foot jumper off the front of the rim. No good, and that's going to rebound out. And I believe go out of bounds off Western Illinois. So Oakland going to get possession here. No, they're going to call a foul. Foul on uh, Jackie Rieger. So Oakland going to keep possession here. Not going to the line, though. Beth Waterworth. Going to inbound that pass all the way back to about half court, the center of that Grizzly to Malika Glover. Malika Glover going to pull it down and get it back to Waterworth. Waterworth going to work to her left. Over to Lemscom, now over to Glover. 
Glover with a hand in her face, decides to drive right on Valencia Kelly. Bounce pass into Waterworth, back to Lipscomb. Toe on the line, long two-pointer. Rebounded by Peyton Apsey, goes up for a shot. Almost gets blocked, but they're going to call a foul on Rachel Evans. So I believe Apsey is going to the line here for her first time tonight. Peyton Apsey doesn't see a whole lot of action. Uh, as she's a smart plug off the bench, comes in and plays really good defense. Yeah, absolutely. She's one of those energy players, just like Liz Hamlet for the Golden Grizzlies. By the way, I want to check this out coming up this Thursday at 6.30. It's going to be the Oakland Basketball All Access Show on Fox Sports Detroit. Our good friend uh, Rick Chapsky here at WXW Radio. I got to work with him back in my days at the city of Warren. He worked for TV Warren and also for Fox Sports. Uh, one of the guys working for High School Hammer Time. He helped put together that show. Good seeing Rick around here at the arena. Peyton Apsey was able to knock down both free throws. She's a 33% shooter on the season. Knocked down them both now, 52-43. As Western Illinois throws up an errant shot, rebounded out by Oakland, but now the ball trickles out of bounds off Western Illinois, so Oakland's going to keep possession here with 12.27 to go in the, first, in the second half. Cam, it seems like every loose ball is going the Golden Grizzlies' way. You know, every blocked shot is coming off of a Western Illinois player. They're getting all the rebounds. This has been a good performance here today by the Golden Grizzlies. Nikki Limscom works it down low to Carnego. Excuse me, Waterworth back out to Limscom, drives in, kicks it out to Veston. Veston going to go up, gets blocked. Blocked by Rachel Evans, the ball going to roll out of bounds. I think a good way to describe this performance is methodical by the Golden Grizzlies. They're coming out here today. They know what they need to do to get a win. They won their last game. They lost four straight before that. You know, they're coming out now on a mission. And they're not blowing this Western Illinois team away, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. You know, a, a nine-point game with 12-11 to go. You know, they're not blowing this team out, but they are dominating them. Make no mistake about it. They have led this game, and they have led convincingly the whole way through. Beston not able to get the first free throw to go. 37% of the season, knocks down the second. And they started this game off. It was a 6-0 run for Western Illinois, and then Oakland went on a 12-0 run in the two-minute span. Right side, Salvatore. We'll get it to Valencia Kelly. Valencia Kelly can use Salvatore as a little bit of a screen there. It goes up Malika Glover. Can't get it to go. Rebounded out by Yulia Beston. Another contested Jay. Beston for the Carnego is going to go right baseline. Gets it in to Carnego. Excuse me, Beston. Can't get that to fall. Rebounded by Rachel Evans. And Evans going to kick it up to Salvatore. Salvatore had started out the second half pretty hot. Five points in about the first minute. She was ice cold in the first half. Now Valencia Kelly dribbles almost around the entire world, it seems like. Around the whole floor, can't get it to fall. And she went up for a shot under the basket, and Peyton Apsey got the rebound. Almost a judo toss by Peyton Apsey. Tonight a season high, as we talked about earlier in this game. Hasn't really taken many shots here in the second half, but had a great first half. As Peyton Apsey is at the line right now, trying to convert on her two free throws as she was fouled before the break. And Cherise came out in the first half and really eclipsed her season high. She had 15 points in the first half, and now she's at 17. She's only taken two shots here in the half, hit one of them. Absey knocked down the first free throw, 37% shooter. Excuse me, knocks down the second one, a 33% free throw shooter on the season. She knocks both of those down. You know, sometimes those percentages just happen because you don't get many looks and you don't have any chances to redeem the misses. That's true. She was one for three coming into this game. It's off of Saudi Webb's foot out of bounds, so it will be Oakland basketball again. You know, once again, another bounce going Oakland's way. It's just another one of those tough breaks for Western Illinois, down by 12 now. Calhoun to AFC on the right wing. Vicky Limson going to bounce it into Waterworth now. Waterworth looking for an outlet. He's in trouble there, double team. Calhoun, she finds her on that left baseline. Now back to Waterworth. Waterworth gets a pass tipped. Trying to hit Vicky Limscombe. Ball poked away now. Hendrickson, though, gets it. Forces it ahead to Lindsey Carroll. First time we called her name tonight. She went in under the basket and got fouled. Freshman from Roscoe, Illinois. And that's what you got to do when you're in transition. You know, if you've got a player up ahead, you want to try and get it to them if you can. But don't force it. You know, a good pass inside, you lead the receiver. It's like with football. You want to lead your receiver a little bit. And then that nice little bounce pass in there. Something you don't want to do with football, the bounce pass. Lindsey Carroll knocks down the first free throw. She's an 88% shooter in the season, 22 of 25. Knocks down the second one as well. Almost five points a game for her. 
on the season. She's played in all 14 contests, seeing her first action here today. Only 13 minutes. Good game for her. Nikki Lemsko. Sharice Calhoun guarded by Carroll. Pete Nancy, that high fake. Wants to work her down low to Vestin. Vestin turns and shoots. Side of the rim off the backboard. No good. Rebounded by Rachel Evans. Rebecca Hendrickson works it over to Salvatore. We had a hot start to the second half. Knocked down a couple of shots early there. Now Hendrickson back to Salvatore. Saudi Webb now cycles it around to Carroll. Carroll going to work in on Peyton Apsey. Goes up with a shot. Knocks it down, but they're going to call a foul on Peyton Apsey before the shot came off. So Carroll will not be going to the line. Instead, Rebecca Hendrickson is going to inbound this one from directly under the basket as Yulia Vestin and Peyton Apsey check out of the game and back in now is Brittany Carnego and Liz Hamlet. Hendrickson got not much of anywhere to throw that ball in bounds, but somehow able to get it in to Lindsey Carroll. Carroll now guarded by Hamlet, hands it off back to Hendrickson. Hendrickson to Rachel Evans, working on Carnego, the two bigs working on each other. Good man-to-man -man defense here by Oakland. Hendrickson back to Webb. Webb for a three-pointer and drains it in the face of Bethany Waterworth, who got there a little late. Just as I say that, bang, a quick three-pointer, but still contested by Waterworth. Didn't give her much space, but apparently just enough. 55-48, Oakland with a seven-point lead here. 9.46 to go in the second half. Waterworth trying to answer that three-pointer off the rim and out. Sharice Calhoun gets the board, though. Decides to slow it down with a new shot clock. And Brittany Carnego works it into Hamlet. Kind of floats it out to Carnego. Carnego back out to Hamlet now on the left wing. Now Sharice Calhoun got it. She's going to go right baseline. Carnego wide open from 15 feet. And she's good from that left baseline. Well, again, this motion offense, even if you're not moving around too much off the ball, it's quick pass, pass, pass. That's what Oakland did to get the bucket there. Saudi Webb working in on Beth Water. A couple of nice moves there, a little up and under. Couldn't get it to fall, though. Rebounded out by Western Illinois, and now Salvatore works it into Rachel Evans, who gets it off the glass. Yeah, and then defensively, you need to box out every time a miss goes up. Salvatore was there in great position. There's a timeout taken by Becky Francis. Salvatore was there in great position. Ryan Everson for the call of those games, the women's game starting at 4.30 and the men's game right after at 7 o'clock as the Golden Grizzlies take on the Dons in the doubleheader. 400 students going down there on the buses. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Down on the floor now, Beth Waterworth here at the O-Arena tonight. Open with the home game. Beth Waterworth, top of the arc, works at the Carnego. Five on the shot clock, got to do something. A little left hook shot. Forced it a little early, couldn't get it to go. Rebounded out by the Leathernecks. By the way, eight points from Stephanie Rosado as IPFW has the lead, 22-17 at half. Lindsey Carroll mentioned her name only once so far tonight. A long three-pointer right over Brittany Carnego and got it to go. So just like that, Western Illinois pulls within four. It's 57-53 with 8.13 to go here in the second half. Carnego now in the paint, gets it down to Calhoun down low under the circle and gets it off the glass and the foul. And there you go, Sharice with her first shot in a little while. And she gets the bucket and the foul. You know, when, you get a, when you get a player like Sharice Calhoun, who just does so many things for you, she can score, she's excellent defensively. And, you know, she's so good defensively, I think people sometimes forget that she can be a scorer as well for the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Her numbers are down this year from the floor, but, Still can be an excellent scorer for Oakland, now at 20 points on the night of season high. Oakland with a seven point lead with 8.03 to go here in the second half. Cone to Taite, looks it over to Rachel Evans. Now on the left wing, Lindsey Carroll with the bounce pass, stolen away by Liz Hamlet. But I think they're gonna get a foul on Hamlet out of reach in there. Looked like a clean play to me. Looked like she just picked the pocket. Lindsey Carroll herself tonight, 20 points. Just over halfway through the second half. She's got 20 already. She showed up tonight. It's the most key of Menifee. I don't know if that could be a hindrance on the offense for the Grizzlies, but yeah, and not Charisse's, really. Sharice's previous career high, 28 versus Oral Roberts back on January 31st of last year, so she likes this one. Saudi Webb got a pass down low there to Rachel Evans, who went up off the glass and got fouled. It's a good month historically for Sharice Calhoun, so with the Golden Grizzlies. You know, they've, they've struggled a little bit this season. 
But I expect them to turn it around here. They get a nice little stretch of games. They get a rough one coming up on the 21st at Oral Roberts. Kevin Looper may be the best player in the conference right now. I think the only other one who's really got a claim to that. You know, maybe Bethany Waterworth, but Dayon Hall Jones from UMKC. I think they're the only ones who even belong anywhere near the conversation. And that's no knock against them. They're fantastic players, but Looper is that good. People going off for 40 in any given night. Rachel Evans split the free throws. And Brittany Cardago down low gets one to swirl around the toilet bowl and tip it through the twine there. 62-54 Oakland, 7.25 to go. Now Hendrickson on that left wing, fires it over to Contatite. She's gonna work to her right, gets double teamed. Throws one up off the glass without even looking. Double team just threw up a prayer and it went in Dwayne Wade style. I guess that's one where you just say, thank you, may I please have another you know, I don't know how you defend a shot like that. 62-56, boy, that was a beautiful, beautiful little touch off the glass there by Ponte Titan. When they can knock shots down without even looking at the basket, I don't know what else you can do defensively. Malika Glover rims out, rebounded by Harrington, though, a foul on Rachel Evans, a little push off from behind as Harrington went up for the rebound. So 62-56, Oakland on top here by six. 6.47 to go the second half. Boy, back into that shot with Conte Taite. That was just unbelievable. Drove in on double teamed and just kind of did a little spin in the air and just kind of chucked it up over her head off the glass without even looking. And that knocks it down to a six point deficit for Western Illinois. Renego hits the front end of a one hand one. Now shooting 80% from the free throw line. Those numbers starting to go up. Excuse me. I got that up on the Big screen, it's up to 80% now, but coming in shooting 11 for 21 on the season. She's got 12 points tonight, missed the second free throw. Shooting 80% here tonight, excuse me. Conta Taite working on Liz Hamlet. Fires the left wing to Lindsey Carroll. Carroll knocked down a couple shots earlier this half. Now Salvatore gonna pull up from the left wing for a large two-pointer. Rebounded by Carnego. Carnego pushes Great it Great rebound over the top. The Glover, Glover works it down low, pushes it up the floor to Cherise Calhoun. Don't look now, she's got 22. Now fast up the floor, trying to work it down to Rachel Evans. Intercepted by Ed Reed. No, check that, it's Brittany Carnego. Oh, coast to coast, how about that? BC flying one way, then the other, and then coming back. Down the court for the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Liz Hamlet over to Sharice Calhoun at the top of the arc. Now Carnegie on the right wing. Launches one over to Beth Waterworth. Waterworth thinks about driving in, bounces it out to Liz Hamlet. Glover now. Bounce step. And gets it to rim out. And she took about a five-foot jumper inside the free throw line and couldn't get it to fall. What are we gonna see? This possession on a Brittany Carnego. You know, she's got the golden grizz on the front of the jersey and maybe that big S on the back for, for Superman. Superwoman out there. She's been excellent on the last two possessions. Doesn't get much better. Hendrickson on the left wing. Out to Conta Taite. Head fake on Liz Hamlet. Bounce pass in down low. Rejected by Brittany Carnego. As Salvatore went up for what a shot I that looked like it could have been an easy two, but Carnego just kind of put that big baseball glove up there and swatted it. Well, what did I say? It's not a 22 on the back of that jersey. It's a giant gold S because she has just been stupendous, sensational over the last three possessions now going either way. <laughs> Hendrickson going to work it into Valencia. Valencia Kelly, and as soon as she gets that impound pass, gets her foot on the line and steps out of bounds without even knowing it. So Oakland gets possession back here. The 65-56 lead with 5.18 to go here in the Absolutely. second. Absolutely, and we saw that one pretty clearly from our vantage point here. Lika Glover out the Waterworth. Ball goes over Carnego's head into the hands of Vicky Limscombe. Limscombe guarded by Hendrickson. She wants the team to spread out a little bit. Hands it off to Waterworth. Waterworth to Glover on the right wing. She's gonna drive in. Six on the shot clock, better do something. Calhoun gonna try to drive right baseline. Ball poked away by Conta Taite, but she's able to knock it off Calhoun last. Yeah, that's a good play by her. She came in on the backside and stripped the basketball. You know, the toughest, the toughest thing to do is when you think you're past somebody to be mindful of where they are, you've almost gotta have eyes on the back of your head. 
Going to tie it a spot shot from the three-point land at the left wing. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Malika Glover, the smallest girl on the floor, five foot three. Glover gonna go coast to coast. Little scoop tries to score. Can't get it though. Rebounded. Offensive foul against Sharice Calhoun as she dove in there for the rebound. Looked like Jackie Rieger was gonna get that rebound, but Sharice Calhoun kind of dove in there and made a little too much contact, so be a foul on Calhoun. It looks like Rieger is gonna be going to the line here. Jackie. Oakland now at a one and one. And in the video board up there to our right that got installed a couple of years ago here at the Athletic Center Row Arena. A nice HD video board. Let's all the team fouls for each team. They've got the score, player fouls, player points. Uh, and then they roll through a bunch of the other stats as well. It's really a magnificent piece of technology. I wouldn't mind one of those sitting in my living room. It's almost That's like sure. uh, trying to compare it to the Dallas Cowboys giant little Megatron type thing that they got hanging from their stadium. They're not quite that big, but it's a nice little television uh, system they got set up here as Jackie Rieger knocks down the first three throw and knocks down the second one as well. Jackie Rieger, six foot junior from Park Rose, Illinois. Kind of knocked down a couple of shots here recently in the second half. Sharice Calhoun and Vicky Lynchcomb. Carnego now guarded by Rieger. A little bit of a size mismatch. Carnego going to Dribble to her right, tries to find Calhoun. No, it's Malika Glover down low. She floats it past the hand, kicks it out to Calhoun, though, and she is good once again. 24 points on the night from the left baseline. Absolutely, 11 of 16 from the floor now. She can't be stopped here tonight. A season high, 24. And an offensive foul. And Cherise Calhoun is fired up down there. She's slapping hands with everybody, saying, let's So you Auburn Hill 67-58 Oakland on top here with 3.50 to go in the second half. Liz Hamlin going to work to her left now. Beth Waterworth open three from the left wing off the front of the rim. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Valencia Kelly. Western Illinois have got some big possessions coming up if they want to get back into this game. Rebecca Hendrickson going to work to her right. Passes it out to Valencia Kelly. She's going to drive in for a three-pointer on the left wing. Can't get it to go. Therese Calhoun gets the rebound off the Jackie Rieger miss. Cam Kelly was four for 10 with eight points in the first half. She's now 0 for five here in the second half, hasn't scored yet. Beth Waterworth. That's an outlet pass down low to Carnego. Carnego goes up and gets the left hook shot on Jackie Rieger. Just too much woman for Jackie Rieger to handle. Yeah, that's a great shot by her, that up and under move. She does it better than anybody in the Summit League. 69-58, Oakland on top with three minutes to go here. Ball stolen away by Vicki Limpscomb. And Kelly just dropped the ball there. Trying to shake and bake crossover move, and she just lost it. Liz Hamlet. Becky Francis wanted a foul coming up the floor. Wasn't going to get it, though. Sharice Calhoun on the right wing here, being guarded by Henriksen. Looking down low for some kind of pass down low, but Carnego and Waterworth guarded too well. Now ball poked away and gathered by Valencia Kelly. Kelly going to work in on Vicky Limscombe goes coast to coast herself, switches hands with the ball and finishes with the left. And that's her first make of the second half. Those are her first points of the second half. She's been held scoreless thus far here in half number two. Valencia Kelly went coast to coast on that one. It's so hard to see certain players be able to finish with both hands. By the way, IUPUI has closed the gap. It's 30-29, IPFW with 14-11 to go in the second half there. And Oral Roberts at home against North Dakota State. They lead 12-7 in that game. Foul on a shot now by Saudi Webb as she kind of head faked Beth Waterworth. Got her, caught her in the air there and then went up with a shot and drew the foul. A little bit of contact by Beth there. So Saudi Webb going to the line here as Western Illinois trailed by nine. So Oakland nursing that nine point lead here, not wanting to let Western Illinois climb back into this one as Webb knocks down the first free throw. You know, Oral Roberts, they're a team that they came out against South Dakota State. They held the lead for a, lot, a large part of that first half. And then they allowed a huge run in that game. It was something like a 15 to five run uh, in favor of the Jackrabbits. And then what did they do? They came from behind Kevin Looper with a steal and a hoop late in that game. And that sealed the deal for the Golden Eagles. Now three and one in conference play. Webb knocks down both free throws. So two for two there, 69-62. Seven point lead for Oakland with just over two minutes remaining here in the second half. Liz Hamlet guarded by Kontataite. 
Sharice Calhoun gets it over to Waterworth on that left wing. Works it down low, give and go from Hamlet to Waterworth, who goes up and gets fouled by Jackie Rieger. So Waterworth back to the line again. 0 for 7 in this half from the floor, Bethany Waterworth. But she's doing some really good things out there. She's getting to the free throw line. And it hasn't seemed like she's pressing a whole lot. Just the shots aren't going down. But she's not taking forced looks. She's taking open looks from the floor for the Golden Grizzlies. Really, again, playing in the confines of the offense, playing within the system instead of going outside of it. And that's something that we've seen a little bit from Valencia Kelly on the opposite side for Western Illinois, where it feels like she's pressing a little bit. And she's gone out way out of her rhythm. Only one for six here in the second half. Waterworth knocks down both free throws. She started out this game hot, had about 11 points in about the first six minutes of the first half, and been kind of cold ever since. Shooting five for 14 from the floor. On that right wing, Saudi Webb gonna spot shoot for three. Off this side of the iron, rebounded out by Beth Waterworth. She was not balanced properly on that shot. She took it leaning a little bit off to her right side. She's trying to do a little too much by herself here as they trail by nine with just a minute and a half to go here in the second. Be trying to force up some quick bucket there. Now Malika Glover, a little bit of a full court press there, loses the ball, picked up by Conta Taite. Conta Taite, gonna pull up with it, decide to slow things down. Now she's gonna try to drive into her left, throws one up, little scoop there off the finger roll. She didn't even jump, she was still running with the basketball and dribbling like normal, and then she just tossed it up. Never would have expected a shot to go up from the way she was running with the basketball, but hey, why not? Whatever works. Hey, this Conta Taite, 6 for 11 from the floor tonight, 13 points. And Sadi Webb may have 17 to be the highest scorer for and Western she, Illinois tonight. She but started off uh, 7 points, 3 of 4 in the first half, so it has continued the good shooting from her. Uh, Conta Taite, to me, has been the most impressive player for Western Illinois tonight. And Sadi Webb might be the high girl in points tonight, but Conta Taite had a good game defensively so far. And also uh, been consistent all game long. And she's been able to uh, play good defense on the likes of Liz Hamlet and Bethany Waterworth. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's sometimes those glue players that really get it done for your basketball club. Mickey Lim's gone. Almost gets the ball poked away by Conta Tai today. Therese Calhoun going to bring it across the timeline. It's a little shoulder into Valencia Kelly that sends her flying. Beth Waterworth getting worked on by Saudi Webb. Her lift come now. Malika Glover on the right wing gets double teamed and gets fouled by Rebecca Henriksen. And that's not a good foul there because you've already burned 18 seconds on the shot clock. You know, they're down to, Oakland's down to 12 seconds on the shot clock at the time of that foul and then you commit the foul. You know, if you're gonna do that, I mean, obviously you wanna play tight defense and sometimes that stuff happens, but if you're gonna play that tight, that late in the shot clock, you gotta have to make absolutely sure that you do not commit the foul. Glover knocks down the first free throw, only had seven attempts from the free throw line so far this season, and she's made four of them. Make that five now, five for eight on the season at 57%. With a win here, Oakland moves to seven and eight. Three and three in conference play. Western Illinois would fall to five and ten. Two and three inside the summit. So Oakland needs this win. As we said, they've won one of their last five as Glover can't get the second free throw ball. She splits them. But that last game was a win for them. Meanwhile, two in a row for Western Illinois. It's Waterworth with a big block over the back. Anthony, Anthony Waterworth just rejects Sadi Webb, but the ball's gonna go out of bounds and Western Illinois is gonna maintain possession here. But that was a uh, that was a hello parking lot block to the basketball yeah, that might right be icing there. on the cake there, too. Now going up with the right hand. A little up and under there, figure roll. Valencia Kelly gets it to roll off the glass, but could be a little too little, too little, too late. 72-66, Oakland on top here with 45 seconds to go. Well, there's six, uh, a, a six point differential, and there's 45 seconds on the clock. So obviously possession there. Again, that big block shot could have been icing on the cake, but it very well might not have been just simply by the fact that you get the ball back, you stay with it. Valencia Kelly getting the bucket there. She's been much better over the last couple of minutes. Again, you know, not to sound too harsh or anything, but at times it seems like she's just taken away a little bit from the offense. And now getting back into a rhythm, she's hit a couple of buckets quick now. She's got eight rebounds, she's got five assists. And now if she can get going here, she's only got two fouls. Nobody really in foul trouble for Western Illinois. Evans has three, and so does Webb and Rieger, but 
you know, you've got a couple fouls uh, built in right there with which you can kind of kill the clock. And on the inbound pass, Liz Hamlet going to get it to Waterworth. Waterworth trying to find somewhere to go with it. Kicks it out to Hamlet. Hamlet bounces it ahead to Calhoun. Calhoun gets it across the floor to Glover now. Oakland trying to kill as much time as they can. Now they have to gamble here. Waterworth bounces it over to Lipscomb. 14 on the shot clock. Hamlet now at about half court. And she's finally fouled. Again, you've got to do that much earlier in the shot clock. Down to 10 seconds now on a 30-second shot clock. And as soon as Oakland escaped from the backcourt, that's the time when you probably want to go ahead and start getting ready to commit the foul because that's 20 seconds gone off the shot clock, Cam. That's 20 seconds that you can't use. Liz Hamlet, two for two from the free throw line tonight. So far, she's a 60% shooter on the season, making three for three tonight. And again, part of that too, that, that seemingly low number for a guard is just because she doesn't have really a high volume to build with. She only shot 10 free throws coming into tonight. 73-66 as Hamlet splits them and can't get the second one to fall. This is crunch time. You got to knock down all those free throws. Now Valencia Kelly going to drive in coast to coast, up off the glass, and oh, baby, I don't know how that one stayed in. That looked like it was about to roll out the outside of the rim, but it somehow got a little bit of backspin and was able to fall. That ball was saying, no, no, please, don't send me down. And, and gravity just said, forget about it, and pulled it right down the wishing well. Oh, the timeout on the floor. Oakland leads by five here, 73-68. There's only 15.9 tickers left on that clock. Anything can happen here, two possession ball game, but you gotta think Western Illinois has gotta use those fouls and they gotta use them quick. As you said earlier, they're waiting a little too long in the last couple possessions to try and foul. Yeah, absolutely. And now, now you don't have that luxury. You know, Oakland split that last pair from the line. You know, if, if you're gonna let it play out a little bit, you gotta count on putting a poor free throw shooter on the line. And Oakland really doesn't have any of those out there right now, and now they're following Sharice Calhoun, who, again, probably not a player you want to be following. Sharice Calhoun only one trip to the line tonight, and it was to complete a three-point play, which she did. But she's 16 of 20 coming into the season here. You know, she's 17 of 21 now. And with that earlier free throw, she's not the one that you want to be putting on the line, but now you don't have that luxury as lots of time went off the clock. 73-68, making 74-68 as she knocks down the first one with 14 ticks left on the clock, 14.4 to be exact. Yeah, and all goes quiet here in the Athletic Center Arena. You know, I'm sitting here with my headset off real quick just trying to see if I can be heard around the arena, and it sure as heck seems like it. For a moment, I'm the only, I'm the only voice being heard inside the building as she hits both of them. You didn't distract her at all. If she did hear you, she knocked it down. Knocked both of them down, and Valencia Kelly pulls up over Calhoun from about 12 feet out and knocks it down to answer. Now Liz Hamlet loses the ball, thrown up now. As she lost handle on the ball, Lindsey Carroll went up with a shot and got fouled. So yeah. she's going to be going to the line here, but they trail by five with just 2.7 left on the clock. And they got the steal, and they got it pretty quickly. But right there, we saw the entire Western Illinois defense. They almost sagged back going into transition. Well, I'm a little surprised Hamlet didn't uh, didn't get fouled there. It looks like she got hacked when that ball came in. And they didn't whistle it. Yeah, but even then, you know, from Western Illinois, you know, you want to play up. You know, as soon as that ball goes in the basket, you have got to be up and you've got to be ready to get the steal because there is no time to waste. They're trying to sort something out. I think they're trying to decide time if on it was the clock, a, maybe. time on the clock and as well. You're also trying to look for, um, you know, maybe trying to discuss if it was on the floor or in the air. When the foul was committed, I think it's going to be a, a two shots here. Again, Oakland with their ninth team foul right there. So it does make a difference. It's all about whether or not that second shot is guaranteed. So it is a big difference. They did add about three tenths of a second from uh, 2.8 back to 3.1 on the clock. On the way out, BFW leads 36 to 31 with nine minutes left there. And 22 11, Oral Roberts doubling up North Dakota State with 11 26 to go in the first half. So Lindsey Carroll. Big free throws for her from the line here. 75-70 as the Grizz gang tries to get in her head. But they do not do a good enough job as Lindsey Carroll knocks down the first one. Now a four-point game. The interesting finish to this game is Oakland will get the ball back here after this uh, possession with 3.1 left on the clock. Four-point lead. Carroll, ball rims around and out, no good. And they're going to have a whistle. 
Uh, foul against Western Illinois. Foul on the loose foul. ball. So that will be Oakland's ball here with four point lead with 3.1 seconds left on this clock. That's even better than shooting free throws because now you get to inbound and kill some clock here. Waterworth fires it to about half court to Vicki Lemscombe who's just gonna dribble away with this one and the clock's gonna hit zero and Oakland's gonna run away with it. A 75-71 victory as Beth Waterworth gets the nice inbound pass to Mickey Lipscomb to kill that clock. Therese Calhoun tonight, 26 points.